Hello everyone. Now you will hear a brief retelling of the movie ATM, enjoy the movie. A mystery man labors diligently in a dark room, measuring and sketching schematics on a map while paying close attention to numerous details for a crucial plan. Then he quickly leaves the home and throws on a puffy coat. David is in the midst of a very trying phone call with a client at a financial firm since he lost a lot of money just before Christmas. His co-worker Corey arrives to take his chocolates and cheer him up after he hangs up. He also tells David that he had to ask Emily out before she leaves the firm after New Year's since he won't have another chance. Even though David has had a thing on her for a while, he doesn't believe it's a smart idea. Later on in the evening, David and Corey enjoy the corporate Christmas party. David tries to talk to Emily as Corey drinks with their other friends. But their talk ends abruptly and is really unpleasant. Emily leaves the celebration a little while later, and David runs after her to inform her that she forgot her hat even though she is wearing hers. She loses another cab as a result of this disruption, and David takes advantage of the opportunity to ask her out. After Emily says yes, David offers to drive her home as she attempts to flag down a cab. David initially makes a trip inside to inform Corey that he is going after she accepts the offer. David is forced to cope with a third wheel as Corey is extremely inebriated and reminds David that he promised to drive him home as well. Corey continues to drink and make stupid remarks during the drive, which makes the atmosphere unpleasant and necessitates David's repeated apologies to Emily. In addition, Corey begs David for his phone as he misplaced it at the party. However, this just causes David's phone to rapidly run out of battery. Even though it's quite cold outside, Corey is adamant about getting pizza and begs David to stop by a neighboring ATM to get cash so he can buy it. Corey informs David that the restaurant does not take cards when he tries to pay with his own card. When they get to the ATM, Corey enters while David and Emily remain outside the car, chit-chatting about David's protection charm. David enters the room to assist Corey when he suddenly begins indicating that he is having trouble with his card. After a few seconds, Emily decides to join the boys since she quickly starts to feel lonely and chilly in the car. As she's leaving, she attempts to lock the car, but it doesn't work. David informs Emily that while the vehicle lock is broken, they won't be late, so she shouldn't worry as she enters the ATM. Then, when Corey's card is declined for whatever reason, he withdraws some cash from the ATM. The three are ready to turn around and head outdoors when they spot someone outside who is wearing a puffy coat. Since there are no cars in the area, Emily finds it pretty odd, and David assumes it may be a robbery right away. But Corey tells his buddies not to worry, he believes it's simply a man who needs to use the ATM. The stranger approaches and scares Corey into going back inside as he opens the door and steps outside. The man doesn't respond when Corey yells out to ask if he wants to come inside. Without moving a muscle, the man just stands there in the shadows, staring at the three of them in a spooky manner. The unknown man turns around and goes to the newcomer, seizing his head to break it and murder him, but just then a dog walker emerges behind him. The group realizes, horrified, that Emily left her phone in her handbag, which is also in the car, and that David's phone is charging in the vehicle. They decide not to contact 911. They search the booth for emergency buttons in a desperate attempt to find a solution, but they are unable to locate any. The man is still standing outside, observing them as though nothing eerie had occurred. When Corey attempts to dissuade David from leaving, he promises he can make it to the car in time to grab his phone and contact the police before the man catches up to him. Later, David begs Emily to give him his car keys. At that point, the enigmatic man walks up to David's car, opens a toolbox, and heads to the rear of the booth. The power goes off for a brief while, and the three suddenly hear sounds. They discover the man broke the ATM's heater with the toolkit when the temperature starts to decrease when it returns. It seems the guy wants them to die slowly instead of attacking them like he did with the dog walker. David starts to pound the surrounding glass in an attempt to activate the ATM's alarm as the man returns to his observation location, but Emily stops him since shattering the glass would let the man inside. In an attempt to trigger the alarm once more, David and Corey start kicking the ATM, but nothing occurs. Though none of them have a lighter, Emily discovers that there is a smoke alarm as well. The group begins to shout to get the attention of the police cruiser when Corey detects some lights in the distance. Sadly, the vehicle doesn't see them as it drives past. 
David has a notion as the guy is listening to them from behind the booth. Perhaps if they give the man their money and jewelry, he will go. They place David's $500, Corey's watch, and Emily's jewelry in an envelope they took from the ATM. David then emerges, demonstrating his good intentions, and begs the guy to release them by tossing the envelope in his direction. David seizes the opportunity as soon as the man picks up the envelope and heads straight for his car. David tries to start the automobile as the shadowy guy chases behind him, but finds the cables are disconnected. He then takes Emily's phone and calls 911, but just then the guy hits the window and pulls David out of the vehicle. Both guys get into a fight, and David unintentionally drops the phone during it. David removes his jacket and retreats back inside the booth because the unidentified man is pulling him by the jacket. To their astonishment, the guy decides not to pursue him and instead takes Emily's phone, tossing it into the car trunk along with the mail. After that, when the boys eventually drill a hole in the wall, Emily writes the word help on the door with her lipstick, but the alarm doesn't go off. Emily thinks that placing the code backward on David's card would notify the authorities when she attempts to use it at the ATM, but Corey explains that this is only an urban legend. Time is passing, and the three of them soon feel the bitter cold. Corey considers going outside when they don't see the person, but Emily stops him. An argument starts as Corey starts to question whether this man is David's client and is seeking retribution for all the money he lost with their firm. Luckily, the cold silences them fast, and they decide to cuddle together to be warm. Emily's message is suddenly seen by a security guard in a vehicle who pulls over to look into it. The three attempt to alert the guard about the murderer and implore him to contact the police as he gets closer to the booth. Regretfully, the guard is beaten to death with a tire iron by the strange man who emerges next to him before he can even take two steps. Corey and David question if Emily's brain is being affected by the cold as she loses all hope and sits in a corner of the booth in a visibly despondent state. The man walks into the booth at that very time, and David and Corey start fighting him right wants to keep him from hurting them. After a violent battle that sends the three men to the ground, David spots some wire hanging from the ATM. He takes it and uses it to strangle the unidentified man while Corey keeps him down. After that, they are troubled by the idea that they had to kill in order to survive, but all of a sudden they realize that the enigmatic man is still standing outside, observing them. Feeling even worse, the trio examines the wallet they find in the body's pockets and finds it belongs to a worker with a family who had wished to use the ATM and just so happened to be wearing the same jacket as the killer. Shortly after, Corey removes the jacket from the body to get warm, and the enigmatic man heads back to the rear of the booth to work on something. After that, a fight breaks out between David and Corey that quickly turns physical as they start blaming each other for being locked here. When Emily begs them to stop, an irate Corey storms out to make his own getaway, rejecting his friend's cries for him to stay. A few feet later, Corey falls on a wire that the man had placed, and he walks over to stab Corey with a screwdriver right away. Though Emily confines him inside, David tries to help, but he pushes Emily too hard by mistake. After Corey leaves, the enigmatic man goes back to the ATM's rear entrance and picks up a fire hose. David and Emily attempt to console one another as they can't believe they lost a buddy. After David admits that he knew the hat he had taken at the party wasn't Emily's and that he had only used it as a pretext to talk to her, they kiss. They hear a loud commotion outside and realize that the man is still working on the ATM's back. The killer is at the rear, so the two take advantage of his presence to rush out and grab Corey, dragging him back inside before he can reach them. That's when they realize Corey is moving and, thus, truly alive. Then, in an attempt to halt the bleeding and avert hypothermia, Emily and David wrap Corey's wound with flyers and Emily's jacket. As David makes a last-ditch effort to set off an alarm by striking the ATM with the garbage can, the enigmatic guy drives David's car in front of it, blocking the entrance, and drives off. It takes just a moment for the hose the technician connected at the rear to start bringing cold water through the heating vents into the ATM booth. Corey is unsuccessfully lifted above the water by Emily and David, although David does manage to locate a lighter in one of the jacket's pockets. David lights some flyers on fire and attempts to trigger the smoke alarm, but he can't reach it no matter which section of the booth he climbs, while Corey drowns floating in the water and the guy takes up a chair outside to continue keeping watch. Emily has an idea, but that doesn't work either. 
She sits on David's shoulders and elevates the garbage can, eventually getting the flame near enough to set off the fire alarm. They are relieved to have finally succeeded, but just then David trips and falls, hitting Emily's head on a shelf and killing her instantly. David is sobbing and holding on to Emily's body when all of a sudden, the security guard's car is rammed by the unknown man's, smashing through the glass. After losing everything, a vengeful David takes hold of Corey's wine bottle and, using a fragment of jacket, transforms it into a Molotov. He then goes outside and hurls it at the man seated on the chair. The figure instantly catches fire, but it soon becomes apparent that the guy in the mystery is actually the security man's body, who is dressed in the same coat. The actual man is still standing back, observing. The guy disappears as a number of police and firefighters arrive and round the ATM. When they examine the surveillance cameras, the tale appears very different, so David attempts to tell them what occurred, but instead he is jailed. The audio is absent, and the enigmatic figure consistently maintained a distance that prevented him from being captured on camera. As a consequence, the evidence suggests that David, Corey, and Emily killed the family man for being a witness while stealing the ATM. Furthermore, it gives the impression that David killed his two buddies. David notices the enigmatic man lingering among the interested onlookers while the cops carry him away. The enigmatic man goes back to his room at some point to devise a fresh scheme. It comes out that he is a serial murderer who constantly devises elaborate schemes to trap victims in ATMs and then places the blame on the final survivor.